So guys, today we are going from this to this. So depending on your bar end, you need to remove the bar end. I have uh, the setup bar ends from Alpha Racing to uh, get rid of the vibration in the handlebars. So use the correct Allen key or hex key to, to remove the bar ends. I'll do that. So I have a video on how to remove the whole thing. You can find it in my channel, but uh, just a short version. If you remove this lip, there is a hex screw underneath there. And what you need is TX number 10 uh, to remove that screw. And then the whole handlebar will become loose and will slide up. So I'll start by doing that. Get back to you. So this is the screw that was underneath the lip here. It's pretty tall one so you may need to jam your fingernails behind it while you're unscrewing to push it outwards and then uh, the whole thing is loose so what we are interested in are these two lips as you can see here one here one there you need to bend them with a small screwdriver i need to get that and get back to you so hard to show you guys but use a flathead screwdriver and just bend this up without breaking it there it goes It's just a cover, as you can see. So, what you will end up with is the connection inside here. And we need to unplug this one. Sorry. There is one connection that goes in there. Just yank it out. And then there's another connection deeper in. And I need to get back to you how to remove that. So guys, this is just pushed in. So you can separate these two buttons. You'll end up with this part. And then the handlebar, which is like this. If you can't get it out, there is a lip, as you can see there. So if you push it towards the center, you can slide this out. Um, we need to go further down and remove the wheel. So we just get ended up with a handlebar, and it looks like it's these uh, three uh, screws, hex screws. And I think it's TX10 as earlier. I will remove this and get back to so you. I have unscrewed these two, and this one is the more important one in the edge because the heater grip is there. So you need to push it off, and then you will be able to separate the famous wheel from the handlebar. So we put that aside and we end up with this. So if you get the buttons like I did for racing and not for street use, uh, you will not be able to use your heater. So you have an option of, of just buying this guy or just put plastic on top of your handlebar grip. Uh, so you don't have to remove this in molecules uh, I'll see where I go uh, I would like
like to use my handle bar heaters because I love them in the uh, early mornings but uh, I'll see where I end up so guys I had to remove the bracket that was inside here and this was not that easy to figure out it's not working to perfection but there's an end there's a red mark that will need to go into the wheel. I was hoping to get rid of the wheel, but you will need this for this configuration. Uh, uh, it's not ending up looking that great as I hoped. Uh, you need to cut away your uh, connection for the uh, heater for the handle grips. I'm actually going to keep it and I'm going to try to put it in the behind. Um, so you will have to reattach through the slip your handlebar. And with this configuration, you have two connections. The one that is not marked with any red dot as this one goes to the harness that comes from the bike. The one with the red dot will go into the wheel. Uh, this is actually pretty cool. I haven't been able to check it out, but this is probably for your rain lights. So you can connect in your 12 volt rain light in here and you can activate it with the, the light switch up here. Uh, major, major problem now except for having cables hanging out like this in the middle is where the hell to put this bad guy and as you can see the size of it uh, you cannot just tuck it away under the handlebar so you're probably gonna go uh, zip tie to the fork um, so I'll have to figure that out and just try to suggest to you what to do with it if you are going for this buttons, these buttons. Um, I would not recommend this product as it is for now. Uh, you will not be able to uh, use your uh, hazard lights or if you have a cruise control you will not be able to do the, use those so this product is just for for racing uh, but there are some issues with it as I, I will show you if you start up the bike so although you have the wheel uh, I need to refill the gas so Usually you will just flip this to the side and this warning light will go away. But this is not happening. You have to use the button on the back side to get rid of fault codes. And if you want to go down, you need to press the button in the behind which is the last button uh, where's my finger there so this one to go down now the tricky part uh, to go left or right you cannot use this as you usually do so sorry uh, sorry my bad I haven't figured out all the buttons so to go left you need to push one button in the behind here then you will go left but if you want to go right then you need to use the the wheel to go right but you cannot go left with a wheel you can only go right if you want to go left you need to push 
the button from the behind. So left is the button, right is the wheel, as you can see. And then uh, if you want to go to your settings, you need to push the end button in the behind. And here you can use the track wheel to do your stuff, I'm guessing. You can go up and down. You can choose OK to set things with the wheel as you would usually do. Uh, so you can have all your red glow lights, writing modes and everything here. Um, so if you want to exit this menu, then again, you need to press the buttons in the behind to get up one step. Press again to get up another step. And let us get back to the main menu. How you do that is pressing the top button here. Uh, so what you have here is basically your light button, which I think activates the rain light if you have one of those. And you have Traction Plus, which I can't do. Uh, right now in this mode, let us do this. Let us go to the settings and activate uh, base track. Racetrack mode is activated. Let's get out of this. And then we go to the other side, the remote button. We choose Race Pro 1. So hopefully this will work. So if I press the DTC or Traction Control Plus here, you can see that it will change to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then uh, to go minus, you press that one, and it will go down three, two, one, zero, and negative. Uh, the middle button here is the ABS. Uh, you can have it off or back on. And then the last button here is your uh, Tripper for for uh, getting your time started. Manual tripper, which is totally useless because I don't know if somebody is using that. But the benefits when you have your lights on is that it will flash. So those are the buttons in the front. Uh, pretty easy. Uh, it's actually cool that you can get your DTC up and down, which you could do with. The original buttons as well. Let's put it to zero. And uh, the three buttons in the back is actually uh, I'm pressing the top button here is your trip stuff in the top. And then you have two more buttons in the back, which is uh, the last button from the bottom will get you into the settings. And the one, as I told you, uh, on top of that will go only to the left until you get to the stop. And then you can get up and down with that. Uh, so what's left is just a line where you had your home here before. I don't know where that is. Attach the handlebar. There's my home. Attach the handlebar with the screw as you did before. Assemble everything. You will get left with the heater connection here that you need to 
zip tie somewhere. And then the major problem is to hide all this junk. I have no clue why they have added this uh, and what's inside it, but it's probably necessary since it's there.